It's a remarkable story which raises a number of interesting questions. Dispatches tried to put some of them to Mr Wicker outside his South London home. Mr Wicker, can you tell me why you were photographed with a gun? Yes, piss off, I don't What were you doing carrying uh, uh, those bags to Birmingham? You must have been aware of what was in that bag. Mr Wicker, were you not aware of what was in that bag? I've got a gun to work. Um, Mr Wicker, Mr Wicker, can you tell me why you were photographed with a gun? So where does the new BNP stand on loyalist paramilitaries who, ceasefire notwithstanding, remain heavily armed? We spoke to John Tyndall before the loyalists announced their own ceasefire. I don't, I believe the ceasefire is a farce and a fraud. I am not expressing moral disapproval of people who help the loyalists there to equip themselves to be, be defended if they have to. You are endorsing morally gun running to the paramilitaries and the sectarian assassins of the UDA in Ireland. You put it, you put it that way. I've told you that I do not do approve. I do not approve of sectarian killings, but I do approve of self-defense measures by loyalists against the IRA. And you do not morally disapprove of your supporters supplying them with arms? Of course you don't disapprove of people supplying arms to a community which has to defend itself. But if Mr Tyndall and the BNP are happy to endorse loyalist violence in Northern Ireland, where do they stand on growing neo-Nazi terror on the mainland? Now then, you red bastards, you better start watching your backs. Because I know where you are now, I want to keep the fuck out of you. You slaggy scum shit. You're all going to fucking die. The city of Leeds. Over the past few months, it has become the unlikely location for a sustained and vicious campaign of neo-Nazi violence. Violence like the recent attack on the home of college lecturer Graham Mustin as he was watching television with his wife and two children. The neighbours saw a group of blokes with baseball bats wearing balaclavas come round the corner. We heard nothing until we heard a sudden smashing of glass. We jumped up, started shouting. My 11-month-old daughter woke up screaming. My 4-year-old daughter woke up screaming. We ran round, and in the time it took us to run out here and open the door here, we suddenly realised what had happened, and they'd run off. And we saw the CA team actually painted on here, and I suddenly realised who they were and what it was all about. Why do you think they picked on you? They picked on me, perhaps, because they've got my name from somewhere. Maybe they followed me back from a meeting. You know, I'm a socialist, I'm a trade unionist, I'm open about that. I'm not perhaps the most active person in the world, but I'm, you know, committed to my politics. My four-year-old daughter is, you know, she's quite a nervous child in many ways. And, you know, she's the sort of child who, when she goes to bed at night, is worried about things that don't exist, monsters and so on. Now she has to worry about something perhaps that does exist, you know, nasty men with balaclavas and baseball bats. A few days later, and several groups of far-right activists leave a pub in central Leeds. Many, though not all, are armed with implements like hammers and baseball bats. On previous occasions, left-wing paper sellers have been attacked outside this pub by organised groups of neo-Nazis, but today the paper sellers didn't show. They were lucky. Because as two of the right-wingers leave, they appear to select potential weapons from nearby piles of scaffolding. In town, three others are heading for a meeting in another pub. They include BNP organiser Dave Owens and two other BNP and C-18 activists who were arrested in dawn raids earlier today and cannot now be named for legal reasons. When they spot our camera, they give chase and attempt to grab the film. When we take refuge in a shop, eventually leaving by a side exit, they could still be seen outside waiting. But Leeds has also fallen victim to the far right's latest tactic. Combat 18 supporters have been compiling and publishing hit lists, the names and addresses of people to be targeted in campaigns of harassment and violence, among them the local MP, Max Madden. The origin of the hit list, I understand, is an address book that belonged to a local community newspaper in Leeds, which was stolen some time ago and was then reproduced, uh, giving names, um, 
home and work telephone numbers uh, of an extraordinary range of organisations in Leeds and other parts of West Yorkshire, including nursery groups and community groups which were wholly unconnected with politics, with trade unions or uh, in any way uh, involved politically. I know of people that uh, did receive hate messages, um, were aware of uh, other strange things that were happening to them um, or to their families. Monday, 9.58 p.m. You fucking middle class bastards, this is fucking British moment from Bradford. If you see any more of their stickers, or you try to set some of our labs up again, like you did other Friday in fucking train station. We're gonna fucking kill you. We're gonna burn out your shitty fucking leaves of the paper. Get that. That was just one of the threatening messages received by individuals in Leeds following the publication of the hit list. Dispatches has established that the person who left that message was this man, Kevin Watmouth of Bradford. Watmouth, who has been jailed more than once for assault, has distributed BNP and Combat 18 material. But when dispatches called on him, his warrior instincts appeared to desert him and he sent his mother and sister out to deal with the problem. I don't care. Go away, please. I'll sit down here. But Watmouth's threats are not untypical. Throughout the country, people have found themselves targeted in Combat 18 hit lists. One distributed in Mansfield named 50-year-old lawyer Danny Phillips and his partner Maggie Klein. I got attacked about three times, just in the street, daytime, um, twice by three blokes, once by just one guy coming up behind me and punch, rabbit punching. Um, and then later that year, um, half a dozen of us were outside the library one Saturday morning. We were petitioning to save the local orthopaedic hospital, Harlow Wood, which is quite famous. And four Nazis, by then they were people we recognised, um, came turned up in full regalia, you know, Doc Martins, bomber jacket, all identical, and basically stormed into the group. At about the same time, well, you got more of the phone calls than I did, didn't, didn't you? I mean, mm, that was around about that. the Christmas time. We, we would get up to 15 phone calls a night. Um, what, well, uh, we are C18, you know, Jew bitch, you know, is Danny Phillips there, the Jewish bastard, was going to get you. Unusually, however, the Combat 18 men who assaulted Danny Phillips were caught. Graham Tasker, Stephen Belshaw and Simon Chadwick were found in possession of C-18 material. Chadwick was carrying the hit list itself. We have investigated these men. Once again, membership of Combat 18 turned out to be synonymous with membership of the BNP. This is a BNP march held just a few months after the assault and there in the colour party at the front, we find Graham Tasker carrying a flag. A few steps behind, wearing an official BNP steward's armband, marches Simon Chadwick. And then, not far behind him, the third C-18 assailant, Stephen Belshaw. Now here we have three prominent members of the BNP who carried out an attack on someone who'd been named in a C-18 hit list um, and yet far from expelling them in the recent in a recent edition of the paper you run their photograph and you make some remark about a Jewish solicitor who scurried away. Now are you going to expel these three people? I've had to look into that particular case and I'm not aware of all the details of that case. Are you going to expel these people? Don't tell me you don't know about the incidents, because they've been convicted. I know, I know about the incidents, I know about the alleged incidents, but I would have to be aware of all the circumstances of that to, to be able to, to give a verdict on it. What happens with these hit lists? How do they work? Well, if they receive one, we'll go uh, wherever the person involved is, and we can either give them phone threats or We'll follow them, and we'll probably beat them up. If that doesn't work, well, violence is used then. And you're a BNP member? Yes, uh, um, as a BNP member, I, I would say yes. <laughs> 